Why beef jerky is always better at restaurants. Now in this one, I'm busting out one of my old recipe books from the restaurants to show you one of my favorite snacks, beef jerky. I think it's perfect timing for the summer and I'm gonna be using all the things. Like I'm gonna tell you what type of beef you should use, how you should marinate it, how to keep it safe. Can this stay out for weeks on end? Who knows? I'm gonna let you know in this video on why it's always better at restaurants. Now here's the old recipe book. And this is the old recipe from one of the restaurants I worked at, beef jerky. Now, why do we use this stuff? Pink curing salt, number one. Okay, well, for one, you gotta measure it right because this stuff could be dangerous if you use too much. Now, two, the reason for it is safety. What this is going to do is it's gonna to help to prevent botulism. Now, the meat can contain bacteria, and since the meat is not being cooked off to a high temperature, that's usually what kills the bacteria in the meat, by the way, um, then we can have that bacteria grow and turn into something dangerous known as botulism. So this will help to prevent that. It also helps to keep that nice pink color in the meat, too. Now, why Worcestershire I always say this wrong, Wor Worcestershire sauce into our marinade. So for one, you might notice that Worcestershire, it really complements beef. And even if you're doing like say mushrooms, which are not beef, and you were to marinate those mushrooms with Worcestershire, it gives it like an overall beefy flavor, even though it's anchovies. So another reason though is it contains acid, which is also gonna help to tenderize the meat to make it a nicer jerky. So this is gonna help tenderize it as well, as overall just make the flavor more complex and nice. Now these are the spices I'm using, but I'm also gonna be using brown sugar and salt. And the reason for the brown sugar and the salt is moisture retention. It's going to help retain the moisture in the meat, and this will also have like a nice caramelization going on in that as well. Basically, a brine. Now, why am I using beef flap for my jerky? Well, for one, it's more available. It's cheaper than using something like a ribeye and it's beef jerky. Like we don't wanna use something super expensive, but also I prefer this cut for the jerky. Reason why I prefer, uh, reason why I prefer this uh, cut is because look at this, the high fat content. And on top of that, this Colorado Craft beef, it's a grass fed, grass finished beef, which means it has a higher omega-3, omega-6 fatty ratio. So it's good fat. But also, anyways, beyond that point, beef flap, it's like tender, but also not too tender. It's got like a good chew to it. I, I love beef flap. It's perfect for this situation right here. And basically, this is it. We could put this in a Zippy Lock bag or just put it in a container like this is what we do at work. We put it in, a, in the walk-in and then just cover it like this. Um, and that's it. This gets put into the fridge overnight and the reason why I didn't slice it prior is because I wanted to penetrate the whole thing and have like a more uniform marinade. That's the reason why we would do it at work like that. I mean, I guess you could slice it beforehand if you want. Anyways, this just goes in overnight before we dehydrate it. Now, why is it how I cut the beef affects this whole process? As you can see, this is two days later. Color has changed. It even looks like texture has changed. It looked like it's, it's gotten a little softer as well. Now, the reason why I say the way we cut this will affect the jerky is because it, it really will. You see, if I cut it with the grain, then I'm gonna be left with a very chewy texture. Have you ever had a piece of jerky that like when you cut it, it just sort of like rips off and it's just very chewy? That, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna rip into its own strands. Now we wanna cut it against the grain. So I'm cutting it against the grain so I don't get those weird rippable strands and it's gonna be much softer. This is gonna affect the entire texture of your jerky. Now, this is a preference thing. If you prefer it to be chewier and rip apart, then go for it. But if you want it to be nice and soft, cut it against the grain. All you have to do is just look for which way the grain is going. As you can see, it's kind of going like this way. So I cut it like this. I don't wanna cut it like this because then it's going with it. Now, here's another thing that matters. Let's get a little closer here. Another thing that matters here is the thickness that we cut this. I wanna go for about a quarter inch thickness and I want them to all be fairly the same size. I'm trying my best as possible to get them all the same size. 
the way I like to imagine it is think of that like thick cut bacon. That's basically what we're going for, the thick cut bacon size. Now, why does it matter how thick you cut the jerky? The reason being is safety for one. Another thing is time and texture. Now, if it's too thick, then it's gonna be unsafe because our meat needs to reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit just to make sure we kill off all that bacteria. And the reason is we, we don't want a medium rare jerky because that's gonna be unsafe. That can promote bacteria growth, botulism, and get people very sick. And the reason being is this is basically, it, it is a preserved meat. So we, wait, we wanna make sure to kill off all that bacteria. So if it's too thick, it's not gonna reach that internal temp in time. It's gonna to take too long, especially since we're dehydrating at such a low temperature. Now, why am I going into an oven with this? I thought I just mentioned dehydrating. Well, actually this thing, it is an oven, but it's also a dehydrator. It's also an air fryer. This is the Breville Smart Oven. It can do it all. If you wanted to make sure all that bacteria was killed off and be extra safe, you could cook it in the oven first until this reaches internal temp 160 degrees Fahrenheit and then toss it into your dehydrator at the 160 degree mark. Now, why do I have this contraption underneath my counter? I have an oven right there. Well, on top of this being a very versatile oven, it can be a dehydrator as well, which can work for meats, fruits, veggies, all those types of things. It keeps it a consistent temperature, which also keeps it safe. Now, because of the dehydrator, we don't run the risk of over drying just because it's such a consistent temperature. Now, what we're looking for is something that's not like too stiff, something that's not too soft, just like a good in between, really nice looking jerky. Now the meat is done, but how do I keep it safe or how, how do they keep it safe in restaurants where we would keep the beef jerky out for a couple of weeks? Well, for one, it needs to stay in a dry environment. Moist environment, bad. It means germs, it can grow like bacteria. So we would use these. These are called, these right here. You already know what these are. The things that say do not eat. You always wonder what happens if you eat them. This is a silica packet. This absorbs, absorbs, absorbs moisture. So we would put this in the container that it's in. And I, I understand, you don't have this. You could obviously just do what I did and order on Amazon, but you don't wanna do that. Here's your next best thing. You get some rice. I've just got some regular sushi grade rice here. And then I have a little tea bag. The rice would then just go into that tea bag and then I can just drop it into my container of choice and then I can drop in my jerk into my container of choice and then boom, dry. My dry jerk, keep it out room temp for about two weeks or if you wanna keep it longer, vacuum pack it, put it in the fridge or freeze it. Either way, however you choose, keep it safe. This is the recipe if you happen to want to follow it exactly as I did.